Hello there and welcome to NRSC 703 Translational Research and Evidence-Based Practice. What you see in front of you here now, you can see as the purple bar across the bottom indicates that I'm currently logged in as the student view. So I want to give you an overview of how the course is set up. The first thing that I want to point out is this information up here up top should be standard across all of your courses. So you'll see roughly the same information along here. So there will be a student resources section which has some basic information about various procedures and policies and ways to get help from the university. When you go back to home, each of the pages should have an instructor tab and hopefully your instructor has gone in and filled it out with the information about themselves and how to contact them and when they're available and many of them will have created a welcome video like you can see here and once you finish watching this video this is sort of where I'd go first to introduce you or to be introduced to me as a part of the process um, library resources are here. Here's another help tab that provides information about how you can go about getting help. And then here's a direct link to Toro One. Um, this icon here actually takes you to the video that you're currently watching, which means the next thing that you want to do is go down here into the sessions. So the sessions are built in a specific fashion so that you have to complete all of the items in one session before you can move on to items in the next session. So well, the first thing you'll want to do obviously is go into session one and you'll see there are three content items here an introduction, the content, and a checklist. If you go to the introduction they will all provide you with a written introduction to the, the material in that particular unit as well as specific learning objectives that you get for that particular unit. You can go back to the session one menu by just clicking here and the next thing you want to go into is the content. Now the way the content is set up is actually twofold. You'll always get a page that gives you both the required readings as well as supplemental resources and in many cases the supplemental resources will be additional articles, additional readings that you could have. And then in each case there's going to be a thing to unlock the content. So in some cases this will be a quiz and the quiz is directly based upon the readings that you have up here. And you'll notice with each of the readings I give you a little introductory line about them so that way you can get a sense as to what it is that I'm hoping that you take away from a general sense from the chapter. Um, each of the quizzes are set up in such a fashion that there are between 15 and 20 questions in each of the quiz banks, but the quiz itself will only pull out between 5 and 10 questions. That means that if you have to take the quiz multiple times, there's no guarantee you will get the same questions each time. The other thing I will mention is that each time you take the quiz, it will mix up the responses. So the item that was response A in the first time you took the quiz might be response C the next time you take the quiz. So as you're looking through the items you want to make sure you read through carefully. Now these quizzes are formative in nature so they do not count towards your final grade. Essentially the reason that they're there is for me to have some measure of confidence that you've gone through and reviewed the material that you find here in these required readings. So if you go to the quiz itself, you'll see it'll ask you about it and you can see I've already practiced it once so I've taken it once and uh, I scored a 9 out of 10 but I could take it again because it will let you take it as many times as you need. So I'm going to take the quiz again and just so you can see and again all of these questions will come directly from the different readings that you have uh, for this particular week and there's nothing stopping you from using your textbook as you're going through these feel free to treat this as an open book activity you can see this first quiz here has a total of 10 items and again this is directly from the material that you're expected to read for the particular week so one of the things that you'll note is that once you've taken the quiz and you've scored and it'll tell you what you need to score here, once you've done that, then it opens up the rest of the content for you. 
So if you click on that, then you'd get your readings again. But now you have all of the content that's here. And normally what you'll find is you'll find some sort of narrative description that leads into a presentation of some kind. Following the presentation, there should be a link to the PDF of the presentation slides, as well as if there's any additional resources or other things that I would like you to look over associated with that those should be immediately following. So as you can see with this case, there are no additional items that you need for this first one that focuses up on the Brownson at all chapters one to two in here. And in some cases, I will have the presentations focused more specifically upon the readings and in the introductory week, I felt that was a good way of dividing it out. Other weeks, it won't be the same. For the most part, as well, you will find that each of the lecture videos will try to fall in that 8 minutes to 12 minutes with the top kind of being in the 15, 16 minute range to try to keep these short. So when you look and you see that there are three content focused ones here, um, one of the things to keep in mind is that that probably only works out to about 35 minutes or 40 minutes of content. And I mention the amount of time because one of the things that you'll look at with this course is this is a three unit course. It's a three unit course that's offered over a 10 week period. So the way units work, it's actually based upon the Carnegie Foundation's uh, unit for uh, measuring the amount of time that's expected in a university level course. So each unit is considered one hour of instruction over a traditional 15 week period. So a three unit course should have approximately 45 hours of direct instruction. For each hour that a student spends in the classroom in direct instruction, it is expected at the undergraduate level that the student will spend between one and two hours of study on their own, and at the graduate level between two and three hours of study on their own. So the way in which this course is set up over the 10 week period, it's designed to essentially emulate approximately 45 hours of contact time or of class time. So what that means is just to go through the various activities to respond to the discussion forms, to take the quizzes, to review the lectures, to read the material that you find here in the content area, that should take about 45 hours of time over the 10 weeks that we are together. In addition to that 45 hours, there is an expectation that you'll spend between 90 and 135 hours doing things like the required and, if necessary, the supplemental readings. Any of the things that are listed down here in the assignments area, those are the types of things that you would do outside of class to either prepare for class or because they are graded or ungraded activities that you would be expected to do outside of class. And I mention that for two reasons. A, so that you get a realistic understanding of what's expected of you throughout the course. And B, because the course is not running over the traditional 15-week period, and I know some of your courses are running 15 to 16 weeks, whereas some of your courses this semester are only running for 10 weeks. And it's important to understand that those courses that are only running for 10 weeks are going to have a higher workload because they are covering the same amount of content, but they are doing it in two-thirds of the time. So the amount of contact hours and the expectation of work that you would have outside of those contact hours are the same. You have less temporal time, if you will, um, to be able to complete that work. So it's important to have that understanding because some of the weeks, this first week, it's probably a little bit less than what you would expect in some other weeks. And, and those figures I've given you, obviously, are a approximation or they are a average throughout the semester. So some weeks there will be more in the way of direct instruction that you find here. In some weeks there will be less direct instruction but more work, more time required to prepare for the week's activities 
or as follow-up in the way of graded or ungraded assignments. Um, once you've gone through the uh, content page, so the readings, the content, and the assignments, the last item off of the Session 1 menu is a checklist. And essentially, this is just a listing of all of the things that you need to do. You will see here at the bottom in red, that is the deadline in which you must have all of these things done. Um, because that's the end of the week and the course is set up with a schedule so that Monday is the first day of the week, Sunday is the end of the week. However, in blue you'll see I've put in some intermediate dates along the way and those are there as guides for you. So what I've tried to do is essentially provide you with this is when I would aim to have this activity or this particular item on the checklist done so that I can stay on track so that I'm not spending all of the time that I'm supposed to be working on the course getting it done on Sunday. This way you can sort of spread out both the classroom hours as well as the hours on your own throughout the course of the week instead of trying to get it all done in a single sitting or on a single day. So that would be how you would go through and then once you've gone through and have hit all of the content items in one session it will allow you to move on to the next session of content. So I'd be able to move into session two now. The other thing that I want to point out here in this overview is before you actually get to the content and go into the sessions, the first thing that you really want to do is to go into the syllabus area. And in the syllabus area, you'll find the course description as well as the learning objectives. There's a link to the syllabus there, a PDF of the syllabus. And then there's a video that gives you an overview of the syllabus. The other thing that you'll find here is anything that gets assigned a date in Canvas, a due date or a meeting date or anything um, that gets a date attached to it will always show up here in the course summary. So you can see all of these items here and there'll be more that get added. So as we add some of the discussion questions that are due by a certain date, they'll show up in this list as well. You'll also notice that over here on the right hand side of your screen under your to-do list, they all show up over there as well. Um, so that'll give you a little bit of a background in terms of how to use Canvas and some of the expectations for you when it comes to Canvas throughout this semester.